Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I'll be doing my mid-year book freakout tag. So I'll have the original creator of this video linked down below in terms of the questions. So if you want to answer them in the comments, I'd love to see how your reading year has been going so far. But I really love these types of videos because it, you can really reflect on everything that you've read so far and like you can focus on what you want to, you know, achieve in the later half of the year. So I feel like overall this has been a really good reading year. I feel like I've been reading a lot more books per month than I normally do and I think it's because I've been really invested in a one, like one series that I just like fly through so I think that's in part of it but yeah overall it's been a pretty good year so far but without further ado let's get started. So question one is the best book you've read so far in 2021. So this one would obviously have to be Sunflower Sisters by Martha Hall Kelly. This is probably my most anticipated book of the year. And for those of you who don't know, this is a historical fiction trilogy that is mostly focused on this one family and their um, contributions to American history, specifically the wars throughout the past, you know, 100 plus years. Um, but it is a fictionalized story based on these true women. So the first book follows Caroline and her contribution to the war during World War II. The second book follows Eliza and um, who is Caroline's mother during World War I. And then we follow um, Georgie who is their great aunt during the Civil War. And what I really liked about this one is that it takes place in a kind of a historical period that I haven't really read um, a lot of books from. And I think that's really unique because it was like something different. I always gravitate towards like World War II, like World War One, and like era books but I think this one was different but the author just did an amazing job with it I think because it deals with a lot of important subject matter and themes that are still very relevant today I feel like the author did a really good job at handling those topics and because this is told from multiple point of views <clears throat> excuse me multiple point of views I loved how she was able to keep the story progressing in a way and then uh, in a way that made it didn't feel like it was abrupt switching from the different narrations and then ultimately weaving these stories together. I thought she did an amazing job. I'm very sad that this trilogy is over, but I'm really excited to see what she has in store next. So question two is the best sequel you've read so far. So this one, hands down, would have to go to How the Light Gets In by Louise Penny. And this is the ninth book, I want to say, in the Inspector Gamache series, but this is a series that I've been marathoning throughout 2021 to late 2020, and I just love it. So this is the book that you know that the author was ultimately building towards, and it was honestly like chef's kiss. It was beautiful. I loved it. I was invested from the beginning and just how she was able to tie in all these different kind of storylines and there was so much going on was just spectacular and that ending was just amazing. So I can't really go into too much about the plot in this one because it is like like I said it's what the series has been building towards in terms of the overall narrative so I don't want to spoil anything for you but this is a crime series that follows um, Inspector Gamache who is head of the homicide department in Quebec and just his you know murder investigations that involve a town called Three Pines and it goes off from there but this is a very character driven series and I think for some people that can be boring but the author does a really good job at kind of enhancing our kind of knowledge and enhancing the personalities and backgrounds of these characters in a way that it makes it really unique and I'm just totally invested in this world and like these characters and everything so like I said honestly I'm just obsessed. So question three is a new release you haven't read yet but want to. For this one it would have to be The Paris Library by Janet, Janet Skelsey Kelskill. Oh boy, Janet Skellin Charles. I'm sorry, I really butchered that. So this is a book that I've heard really great things about, but it's a dual storyline. So it takes place in Paris, 1939. So a young and ambitious um, Odell um, has it all, her handsome police officer Boo, and a dream job at the American Library in Paris. But when the Nazis march to, in to occupy the city, I think it's Odell. Deal <laughs> stands to lose everything she holds dear, including her beloved library. Together with her fellow Canadians, she joins the resistance with the best weapon she has books. When the war finally ends, instead of savoring freedom, Oldie 
um, taste the bitter sting of unspeakable betrayal, and then we also get Montana 1983. Lily is a lonely teenager looking for an adventure in a small town, Montana, and the in the air of mystery around about her solitary elderly neighbor from Paris piques her interest. As Lily uncovers hints about her past, she finds that they share a love of language, the same longings, and the same intense jealousy, never suspected that a dark secret connects them. And I think this one sounds totally amazing. I definitely want to pick this up sometime this summer. And like I said, I've heard really great things about it, so I'm really eager to dive into it. So question four is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. This would have to be At First Light by Barbara Nicholas, and this is the newest installment in the Sydney Parnell series. And I truly love the series so much, but it follows Sydney, who is a um, veteran from Afghanistan. And so she is very much still struggling with her PTSD, but she ends up working originally as a kind of railroad detective, and it kind of follows her investigation down the line but what I really like about this not only does she have a canine companion named Clyde but this book does not shy away from the PTSD that a lot of veterans have when they come back and essentially a lot like a lot of the discussion in here is focused on how there isn't really a lot of good resources out there for people especially when they come back from the war so like come back from war so I really like how it highlights this but I like to go into these not knowing anything about like the plot or the synopsis or anything so I haven't read anything I'm just really excited just to pick it up. Question 5 is the biggest disappointment. This one would have to be hands down the Midnight Library. This was I think the first book club pick that I picked for um, 2021 and yeah, no one really seemed to like it, and I think this book had so much potential. It's about this girl who is overdosing, and so while she's unconscious, she like subconsciously goes to the Midnight Library, which allows her to live out different versions of her life if she chose different, if she decided to go on a date with someone, or if she, like, basically the regrets of things that she did or didn't do. Um, I felt like this had a lot of potential to really bring in a lot of important themes and topics and just um, make it very poignant but it got repetitive to the point where it was just like really annoying. I felt like the author was trying to be very lyrical with his writing um, but it was just it sounded very preachy and it just in my opinion it fell flat. I think like because the premise of it sounded so good and there was so much potential with that that it just in terms of the execution it was not good. Question six is the biggest surprise. This one would have to be The Maidens by Alex Michaelides, and I really loved The Silent Patient, so I had high expectations going in here, and I feel like these are, like, looking at the initial reviews for this, this is a, like, it's a book people will either love or hate, and I actually ended up loving it. Even though I was able to figure out who the character was, I was just so, like, who the murderer was, sorry, I was just so invested in this story that I just honestly finished this within a day, like, I couldn't put it down. But it follows a girl named Mariana who is a group therapist, and when she gets a call from her niece um, who is studying at Cambridge that basically her friend has been murdered, she literally drops everything to go be with her niece um, and she's convinced that one of the professors is guilty but she's not sure why and I loved it like I that I even though I was able to figure out who the killer was very early on I was still very much invested in figuring out why it was and all that so like I said I really loved it it was I liked it a lot more than I was expecting to um, but even though like the ending I felt like was a little bit rushed and I don't understand the motive of why the murderer did what they did, I still really liked it. So yeah, this one had like so, so many shocking like revelations in here that I was just honestly hooked. Question seven is favorite new author. For this one, it would have to be Leela Meacham, which um, she wrote Dragonfly. And this is the first time I've read from this author, but I really loved it. I loved this storyline and her writing and just her ability to weave in very different multiple point of views but still make the overall narrative progress and I didn't feel like it was abrupt going from the different narrations and everything like that so I really liked it I feel like she I looked her up and she does write a lot more historical fiction as well so I'm always on the hunt for a good historical fiction author so now that I have a new one I'm really excited that I can pick up more of hers in the future um, so that is very exciting question eight is your newest fictional crush now I don't think 
like I have like a fictional crush in the sense like I'm in love with someone but it's more of like I'm in love with this series and it is obviously the Inspector Kamosh series like I said I'm in like deeply in love with this like the town of three pines I'm deeply in love with the characters like I'm just all about all around in love with this series like I'm just obsessed like oh my goodness but yeah definitely I'm very much in love Question nine is newest favorite character. This one I think would have to be Addie from The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I think she's a very interesting and complex character. Um, so this follows a girl who doesn't want to get married um, on her wedding day. So she ends up fleeing into the forest and she ends up making a deal with the devil that she does not want to belong to no one. So the devil kind of twists that into a way um, that she can live forever, but she no one's going to remember who she is. So she can have a conversation with someone, walk away for like 30 seconds, come back and they won't remember her so she goes through 300 years of navigating life with being basically being invisible and I think just how she learned to make a mark on either people or a mark on history to show people that she was there I think was just really interesting and just seeing how she progressed throughout the centuries to eventually kind of challenging the devil and kind of they both had their own kind of skin in the game that they did both did not want to give up and like admit defeat so I really like that and just that dynamic so yeah definitely has been a new kind of favorite character um for this year so question 10 is a book that made you cry and this should come as no surprise but it is obviously the four winds by Kristen Hanna I feel like there are very few books that Krista Han Kristen Hanna has written that I haven't cried in and this is one where I cried several times especially kind of leading towards the end but this is a book that follows a girl named Elsa who never has been loved by anyone not even her family so when she ends up kind of being involved with the guy and they end up um, getting pregnant she kind of is forced into this loveless marriage and so it follows her and her family's journey of trying to survive the kind of dust bowl depression era America during this time period and I felt so much anxiety throughout this whole thing like I was stressed out to the point where I was just like I can't honestly like this is too much um, but yeah it was just really like I was so invested in these characters and just wanting the best for them that I was just honestly just on high alert throughout the whole thing and especially what happens at the end like I was literally sobbing um which is no surprise I don't want to spoil too much about it because I feel like Kristen Hanna books are really good at showing like the emotional connection and like the um you know the showing showcasing different narratives of the human experience and I think that's really special Question 11 is a book that made you happy. This one would have to be A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. Me and my friend were so invested in this series. Like this is like my equivalent of watching reality TV. Like I know it's not good for me, but I love each and every part of it. Um, but me and my friend read this as part of our book club. And I think that also made me happy too, because we like honestly flew through this book. Like it is massive, so big, like it's just, Oh, like 750 pages of this thing but I, it was just a good social thing for us because we were able to like meet every couple days to discuss this and it was provided some social interaction even though it was virtual but it provided some socialization that we j I just haven't gotten enough of over the past year with the pandemic so yeah even though like I just love these characters I I, I recognize and understand and agree with the flaws of this series and just with Sarah J Mass's work in general, but I love it. It's like my guilty pleasure. Question 12 is a favorite book to film adaptation that you saw this year. So I have to admit, I haven't seen any book to like film, book to movie adaptation, or book to film, book to TV adaptations at all this year, which I don't know. I just feel like there hasn't been a lot of adaptations coming out or the, the ones that have been out I'm just not interested in viewing so yeah. <laughs> so question 13 is a favorite review you've written this year. I think what this one would have to be the one that I did for the four wins and I think because this is a more popular book that more and an author that more people are familiar with that book that video in particular has 
quite a bit of review or views on it so i was able to get more kind of interaction with engagement with the community which is always good but i think because this author is so well known that it kind of got more views because of that um but it got more engagement from you guys which is my favorite part about posting videos so question 14 is the most beautiful book that you bought so far this year I think this one is kind of basic but I love the simplicity of it but it is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I just love just the simplicity of it and then also the integration of kind of like the constellation and stars in here that are also kind of present in this as well but yeah I liked it like I said I, I think it's just like a very basic kind of you know simplistic mob, um, cover but I really like it and it's just consistent throughout the whole thing and even the spine I think is just pretty. So question 15 is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? So for this one I definitely want to catch up with the Inspector Gamache series. I will be hopefully caught up by the end of June which is very exciting and then the new book comes out in August so I'm like this is perfect timing and then there are a few books on my TBR especially historical fictions that I definitely want to get to over you know for the rest of the year but yeah I have like so many books that I'm excited about but I'm like just so obsessed with the Inspector Gamache series that everything has been kind of put on the back burner but yeah nevertheless I still really am <laughs> like excited for a lot of these new releases so that's it guys I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comments below what some of your favorite books and biggest disappointments were of the year so far and all of that fun stuff so yeah thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time bye guys